Hello and welcome to this special show on the Taliban fighting strong. We will tell you uh, everything we can about the Taliban military power. The Taliban's force for Tag Kabul now is the Badri 313 Battalion. There is a full report about that. When you think of the Taliban, you think of that stereotypical terrorist image in their traditional garb wielding a Kalashnikov rifle. An image visible very clearly when they posed inside Kabul's presidential palace. But the Taliban's muscle has another side to it. What you're looking at is the Badri 313 Battalion, a special commando-style unit that is securing the Taliban's hold over Kabul and other parts of Afghanistan. As the Taliban took over the presidential palace, the Badri 313 fanned out across Kabul, keeping a hawk's eye on any reprisals. And in case you hadn't noticed, the Badri 313 looks like any modern special forces unit. Take a close look at this image of the unit. Observe how well equipped the soldiers are. Apart from that big Taliban flag they're wielding, the Badri 313 soldiers wield modern assault rifles, modern firearms, updated combat clothing, including protective vests and pads, and even night vision optical devices attached to their combat helmets. While training and tactics are definitely everything, a cursory look at the Badri 313 in comparison to Indian and Pakistani special forces shows that they definitely look at least geared for the part. Earlier comprised of a mix of militant groups, the Badri 313 now operates with the Taliban. The name of the unit originates from the Battle of Badr in which Muhammad led a victorious army of 313 men. Indoctrinated with the Taliban's brand of militant Islam, with a name that harks back to an ancient religious war, but kitted out for the modern battlefield. The Badri 313 train like any commando unit, with all manner of tactical storming and attack training conducted at undisclosed locations in the hinterland. The high quality images released on social media by the Badri 313 last week also appear pointed at serving a purpose. Experts believe it could be the Taliban sending out a signal that they aren't a ragtag movement of farmers and shepherds who live by stealing weapons, but have embraced modern military methods, even special forces operation tactics. The Badri 313 unit has already begun to secure Kabul and other areas, imposing the will of the Taliban. With the Taliban now in power, there's every reason to believe that the militia could grow in strength. Expect to see much more of the Badri 313 in the weeks and months ahead. Bureau Report, India Today. The interweapons talk of the Afghan army is now with the Taliban. There is a detailed report on that. 44 main battle tanks. Over 1,000 armored fighting vehicles. At least 775 artillery guns. 20 advanced mine protected vehicles. In 72 hours, the Taliban has inherited one of the largest halls of heavy weaponry in its history. Gone are the days when the Taliban had to make do with a handful of rifles left behind by retreating forces. Now they've hit the mother load, with caches of thousands upon thousands of firearms falling into their hands. A dream come true for the terrorist-style movement, the Taliban has had to exert little or no pressure to capture these enormous weapon stocks. But as we've reported here on India Today, hitting the firearms jackpot is only one side of the story. The true meat of this jackpot is the heavy weaponry that has fallen into Taliban hands. The Taliban has had experience hijacking one or two Soviet tanks in the past, but they've now inherited a full regiment of main battle tanks, 
a formidable arsenal to have to impose its will on the streets of Afghanistan, inheriting hundreds upon hundreds of armoured fighting vehicles and iconic Humvees mean Taliban forces get to move in a much more militarised manner, easing the flow of their military objectives. A crucial, unprecedented gain for the Taliban has been the huge arsenal of artillery that has fallen into their hands. This includes 24 pieces of US 155mm M114A1 howitzer guns that had been given to the Afghan military by the United States. And with these US Max Pro mine-protected vehicles, the Taliban can conduct much more perilous operations in dangerous parts of the war-torn nation. It is very important to note that the Taliban has inherited weapons capabilities that it did not previously have. And the implications of this lethal inheritance will only be known in the days and the weeks ahead. The Taliban has promised a bloodless regime in Kabul. Just how bloodless, with so many teeth at its disposal, remains to be seen. Bureau Report, India Today. Has also captured a huge number of aircraft, but can be used in? Let us find out. Taliban terrorists posing with their newfound spoils. With the United States upping and leaving so abruptly and the Afghanistan military simply disintegrating, the Taliban has become the biggest inheritor of modern weapons. And in a matter of hours, they've also become the world's biggest unrecognized air force. From Super Tucano light attack aircraft, to MD-530 utility helicopters, to Mi-24 attack helicopters, to Mi-17 medium lift helicopters, to even advanced Black Hawk helicopters, and even vintage L-39 jet trainer aircraft. Practically overnight, the Taliban has become the world's largest unrecognized state with a substantial air force. It's one thing to inherit all these aircraft, but utilizing and deploying them for offensive operations is entirely another. And the answer to that isn't simple at all. Let's do a quick reality check on whether the Taliban can actually use all of these aircraft now in their possession. The Taliban doesn't have a trained pilot force, but videos like this one, purportedly showing a Taliban pilot flying a Mi-17 in Kandahar, suggest that they've possibly been able to enlist pilots from the erstwhile Afghan military. Next, the frontline attack aircraft of the Afghan forces that are now with the Taliban, the Brazilian-built Super Tucanos. Similarly, the Taliban doesn't have pilots of its own, but is understood to have enlisted existing pilots to operate these aircraft. And remember, these aircraft can fly bombing missions with precision-guided munitions, as you can see in this image to the right. Operating small utility helicopters like the MD-530 will come easy, with the Taliban likely to use existing pilots or train some of its own men in flying them. Such helicopters will be super useful for tactical military operations and special ops. When Kunduz fell, this image went viral, showing Taliban in possession of a Mi-24 attack helicopter gifted by India to Afghanistan in 2019. With the rotors removed, it seems unlikely that the Taliban can get that aircraft off the ground. But the Taliban are nothing if not resourceful. And the grey world of weaponry means that they can use their connections both with the existing Afghan military as well as Russia to perhaps get these helicopters into flying condition. But even with all that, it's never as easy as simply calling them the Taliban Air Force just yet. Aircraft don't just have to be flown, they have to be maintained, repaired and painstakingly kept flyworthy. But those could just be the nuts and bolts of the new rising power in Afghanistan. Whether the Taliban can wield precision strike aircraft, armed helicopters and special mission planes in the near future remains to be seen. Bureau Report, India Today. For the first time, the Taliban also get uh, advanced drones, more than in this report. What you're looking at is a Scan Eagle drone in the hands of an Afghan soldier. But this image is history, because these drones have new owners. 
Found packed neatly in their boxes in Kunduz, these advanced surveillance drones are now in the hands of the Taliban. These images from the Kunduz airbase a few days ago, providing proof that the new rulers of Afghanistan are now in possession of an advanced surveillance drone capability. The Taliban has transported these Scan Eagle drones now to an unknown location where they will no doubt begin to figure how they are used. Let's first tell you a little bit about the Scan Eagle. The US supplied drone is used for real time surveillance and reconnaissance, capable of operating for long hours, even 24 hours or more beaming back real-time imagery in day or night conditions in high definition with infrared video as well. Such drones, if integrated properly into the unfolding military machine, will provide the Taliban with an unprecedented capability, one that allows the Taliban to keep constant visual tabs on troubled parts of Afghanistan, monitor movements of enemy factions and alliances, and keep a watch on the border areas. Something the Taliban has so far only managed to do with human assets or very basic drones like this Taliban hexacopter reportedly shot down in Afghanistan's coast province recently. Apart from the capability, these drones falling into Taliban hands is a serious blow to the United States which protects such technology with great care. The Scan Eagle may not be the most advanced of drones, but its availability now to the Taliban's friends, theoretically, including China, will be a source of deep discomfort for Washington. The Scan Eagles in Taliban hands also becomes representative of the billions of dollars of US public money meant for the protection of Afghanistan, now falling into the hands of Islamic extremists and terrorists. Bureau Report, India Today. And finally, here is a report on how the Afghan army did not fight back. The story of how the Taliban took over in Afghanistan. As Taliban fighters advanced towards Kabul on motorcycles and Toyota Jeeps, the Afghanistan National Defense Forces that were meant to stall if not stop their advance, just collapsed. Resistance was only name and that too in isolated pockets. In most places, the Afghanistan National Army just melted away. The Afghanistan Air Force with its Mi-17 transport helicopters Super Tucano light fighter jets just did not provide close air support and chose to escape its neighboring countries. There were instances of Afghan National Army taking off their uniforms and joining the Taliban as they advanced. Experts say right from the time the Americans inked an agreement with the Taliban at Doha, the Afghan National Army had no will to fight, despite their claims to the contrary. Experts have been analyzing the cost for the route of the army that has had more than 8,000 fatalities fighting terrorists bravely in the past 10 years. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani was in the line of fire for frequent changing of military hierarchy. In June, he replaced both the defense and interior ministers and also the Afghan army chief. But in August, as Taliban captured more territory, General Wali Muhammad Ahmad Zai, who was made army chief in June, was replaced by General Hibatullah Ali Zai in under two months. This impacted strategy and operations. The army did not heave clear instructions from the political leadership in terms of neutralizing the Taliban. After inking the Doha agreement, the move was for an inclusive government and avoidance of bloodshed. The famed 10,000-strong Afghanistan Special Forces were not effectively deployed 
to neutralize the threat posed by advancing Taliban that systematically took one province after the other. Though the United States invested more than $88 billion in the Afghanistan army, over the years, corruption and poor systems of checks and balance resulted in rampant corruption and pilferage. Afghan commanders also struck deal with the Pakistan-backed Taliban, sold off weapons and turned a blind eye to the advancing Taliban. The Afghan National Defence Forces were raised as a counter-terror force and not as a standing army to stop the advance of invaders. They were heavily dependent on the US air support for success in operations. However, once US President Joe Biden decided to pull the plug and left the Bagram Air Base in the middle of the night without even informing the Afghan counterparts, these contractors pulled out too. And maintenance and serviceability of aircraft and air assets was adversely impacted. The Northern Alliance was able to push back the Taliban with the help of US air support due to the charismatic leadership of Tajik warlord Ahmad Shah Massoud. Clan loyalties play a major role in the region. However, President Ghani, under American influence, attempted to raise a national army, weakening warlords like Marshal Abdul Rashid Dostum and Atta Muhammad Noor. Political interference too weakened the army. Not everybody in the Afghan army is sold out to the Taliban. Hundreds of soldiers with their weapons have rushed to Panjshir to join the resistance. Several Air Force pilots took the aircraft to neighboring countries to save air assets from falling into Taliban hands. Amrullah Saleh, the vice president of Afghanistan, says they will fight the Taliban under the Northern Alliance flag. I hope you are enjoying this special broadcasting from Kabul. Thanks for watching.